Welcome back to the FM Garage. My name is Mike Ussery, and today I'm going to show you how to rebuild your rear brake calipers. Before we get started breaking down the caliper, let's talk about the parts and pieces and tools that we need. So today I will be using one of our friend kits, which is a brake caliper rebuild kit. This one in particular is showing the parts and pieces needed to rebuild a non-sport 1.8 rear caliper. Your kit may look a little bit different than this if you have a different style caliper, but the overall basics are the same. So everything that you need is gonna be right here included with the kit, and this is available from flyingmieta.com. Now that we've talked about what parts are included in this kit, let's discuss the tools required to install them. Here in front of me, I have an assortment of tools that you're probably familiar with, or maybe even have these in your toolbox already. So I've got some simple tools like some wrenches. I've got some eight, 10, 14, and even a 12 millimeter. And they also have some sockets in the same sizes. Sometimes it's easier to reach certain places on a caliper with sockets instead. Ratchets, of course. I have some pliers, a flathead screwdriver, a couple of Allen wrenches. You'll need a four and a six millimeter for most calipers. I have some cleaning equipment and PPE. Brake clean, of course. I have some simple green, or if you just need a water-based soap of some nature. And then I also have some picks. Pretty simple stuff. The only oddball in this lineup today um, is a set of these snap ring pliers. So these are very specific snap ring pliers that they have a 90 degree angle to them. And then they're about two inches long. This is necessary to get to the snap rings down inside the caliper. So you probably don't have one of these, or if you do, excellent. Otherwise, jump on Amazon or eBay or something like that. Spend about 15 bucks and you'll have one of these at your door in a few days. So pretty simple lineup for most of these tools. Um, it is handy also to have flashlights and other things like that handy if you need them, but that's all you need to be able to rebuild these calipers. Now that we've covered the tools, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's get cracking with the breakdown. First thing we're gonna do is get this caliper open on the rear calipers on these particular ones, and most you will have a little plastic cap covering one of these slider bolts. And these are usually pretty hard to get out. Sometimes if you're lucky or just have strong fingers, you can work them off that way, but using pliers is quick and easy. This is something that you won't need to reuse, so we'll just put that off to the side. On this particular caliper, this little slide bolt is a 10 millimeter, and I am just gonna whip it out of there. There, as you can see, this caliper is definitely in need of a rebuild for numerous reasons. Hopefully your caliper hasn't spent the last 15 years under the uh, water like this one has. But with the friend kits that we have, you don't need to reuse that either. So that will be extra bits at this point. Wow, this is a particularly crusty caliper. <laughs> so I've got it open. And I can take all the old pads, springs, and other slider hardware off of here. This is also a good opportunity to replace your pads, your sliders, your springs, that kind of thing. Of course, since we have it apart if you need to. Now that I've got the one side off that's actually threaded in place, I'm gonna pull the other one off. And surprisingly, it's not actually as bad as it would seem. So this piece, we'll come back to it in a little bit. We're gonna continue working on the main caliper housing. But now I have access to the whole caliper. And as I mentioned, the pads are already removed. This is a good point that because we're rebuilding the calipers anyway, I'd go ahead and replace pads if they aren't pretty new. But the next thing I'm gonna do is remove some of the gaskets and these boots. This one comes off, no big deal. This one on the other side actually goes through the caliper housing. So this is sometimes a little bit hard to be able to remove. So one thing I like to do is I like to shove a screwdriver down in here. That way I can kind of push it around a little bit. And then you can use WD-40 or whatever you like. Uh, I like to do just a little spritz of Simple Green because it's a cleaner and it also actually works pretty well as a lubricant. But you do that, you can use a screwdriver, you can use your pliers, whatever, but you just force it out. And that's it, done, easy. 
So now that we have those guys out of the way, we're gonna turn our attention to the piston. So on these types of rear calipers, you normally would just apply pressurized air here where the brake line came in, but because this is a parking brake rear caliper, you can't do that. There actually is a threaded bolt or a rod that attaches to the back of the piston and we need to manually actuate it out. So on the back of the, the caliper here, there's a bolt that covers our adjuster. And on this caliper, it's a 14. So I'm just gonna break that loose. Usually, once you break it loose, they're easy to pull out because this bolt actually doesn't do anything other than seal this from getting dirt. There's a little copper crush washer on that. Put that to the side, we're gonna need it. And now, down inside, there's a little adjuster with an Allen keyway. And that little keyway on this particular caliper is a four millimeter. So I have my Allen wrench. So to actuate this piston, I'm gonna manually use my Allen wrench in that little spline drive on the back side of the caliper. And I am going to manually extend the piston. It does move slowly, but once you get it going, you can see that that is actually extending the piston because there is a threaded rod on the back side that is manually moving the piston out. Once you get this fully extended, there we go, you'll feel that your spline drive doesn't really do anything. It gets a little bit loose. That way you know you're at the end of your travel with that rod that's inside the housing. And there's not a whole bunch of room between here anyway to use the, the wood block trick like on the front calipers. So now that I've got it fully extended, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pair of channel locks, grab onto the end of that piston, and I'm going to wiggle this around until I can break the piston free of the bore. There we go. So there you can see the back side of your piston has a threaded body. So that's what we have to do is unthread the piston through so that way that thread that's in the body is not attached to it any longer. And don't be worried about scratching up the piston. You're not gonna reuse this piston, so trash. But now that we've got that pulled apart, this boot can come out. Another crusty rubber piece. And then down inside there, you can also see, hopefully, let me put that down, that there is a little gasket, little square O-ring that seals the piston. I'm going to attempt to pull it out of here. So I'm just using one of my little pick tools. I pulled this little square O-ring out. Also not going to reuse that. So that is our caliper. Removing all of the piston cylinder O-rings and dust shields and stuff like that. We're getting really close to having this caliper completely torn down, but there's one more step that we need to do to finish it off. And you do need a special tool to be able to achieve that because we have a snap ring that's in a very tight location. So I have these special snap ring pliers that they have a two inch jaw on a 90 degree angle. These are also inside snap ring pliers, meaning that when I squeeze the handles, it also squeezes the pinch points rather than if squeezing the handles and expanding the pinch points. That's for an outside snap ring. So this is inside snap ring because it's tucked down in there. We need this special tool. This is likely not something you have in your toolbox already. However, these are all over um, online auction sites and other online parts availability sites that you can get a hold of for not too much. I think I paid about 15 bucks for these guys. So get a hold of some of these if you haven't already because um, picks and other modified pliers likely won't do the job. So down inside here is that little snap ring and we'll cut to a scene where you can actually see what I'm talking about here. But inside that little guy, there is an even smaller snap ring. And basically you have to reach your pliers down in there to be able to access it. And once you have these guys carefully positioned, there we go. And you're able to grab a hold of it 
carefully wiggle it out of there. And there it is, there's our little snap ring. So just like that, when you have the right tool, it makes this job really easy. If you don't have it, you will be struggling forever. So now that we have that snap ring out of there, now we can take the threaded rod out of the caliper itself. And you can actually just grab onto it and wiggle it a little bit. If you want to be extra careful with it, you can actually take the old piston or the new piston for that matter and set it against the threaded rod. Make sure you have your little splined drive back in the back of the caliper. And then take your Allen and you can actually thread in the rod just a little bit. You only need to catch a few, there we go. Just need to catch a few threads. And once you've done that, then you can just take the caliper and separate the piston, carefully wiggling it back and forth. There we go. And then out comes the threaded rod plus the spline that is engaging that little spline drive. And then also there's a very greasy little dowel rod here as well. So if you don't see this little dowel rod, it's still in the caliper. You'll need to fish it out. Now that we have the threaded rod out of the caliper, there's one last part that we need to remove, and that is this arm for the parking brake mechanism. So there's a spring that holds it in place that we'll need to remove, but we need to take this off because there actually is a seal underneath this that we'll need to get access to. So you can take pliers and with a little bit of pressure, pull that spring off just like so, and be careful. Springs are under tension, of course. But once you've done that, now this piece should wiggle out. And this is just a simple rod, no big deal. It will probably have lots of grease on it. We'll clean that up and replace it. But now you can see the very last seal that we have on the caliper. So this is something that, uh, like many oil seals, you can just use a small flat blade screwdriver to carefully pop it out of place. And that's it. That is a completely disassembled caliper. Um, at this point, actually, the last, last thing we can do is remove the bleed screw. There we go. And that is it. This is a completely broken down caliper. At this point, what I'm gonna do is clean it all up. There's a bunch of old grease. It's got dirt and debris and stuff like that. And then a little bit of rusty crusty on the edge here that I'm gonna clean up. And that way we'll be ready to install all the new gaskets and seals and then put the new piston in and all the other hardware. So I'll get this cleaned up and here in a second, we'll get to putting it back together. Our caliper is nice and cleaned up. All I did was degrease it. You can use a brake clean or some kind of a degreasing material, actually another good one. If you wanna be a little bit more ecologically responsible is simple green or something like that. But basically wanna degrease, get all of the old stuff out of there, get it nice and cleaned up. I've cleaned up some of the ceiling surfaces with a brush just to make sure I don't have extra rust to deal with. And then of course I used a couple of picks, screwdrivers and some rags to be able to wipe it all up and get all the old stuff out of there. Pretty straightforward process. At this point, if you wanted to, this would be a good point to stop and paint. So if you wanted to paint this a nice race car red for an extra five horsepower, you could do that. This caliper is not gonna go on a show car, so we're not gonna bother painting it, but we are ready to do that if you wanted to. And then from here, we're gonna start the reassembly. So 
reassembly is pretty much reverse of removal. And we're just gonna start with the parking brake mechanism first since that's the last thing that we remove before cleaning the caliper. So I do have our parking brake mechanism parts here in front of us. There are some odd little parts that like to run away and roll off the table, so be very careful. If you have a parts tray, it would be good to use it for these parts. So first thing I'm gonna do actually is I need to put a new seal on this threaded rod. There was an old O-ring that I removed. And with our friend kit, we have a brand new O-ring that I will slide over this guy. There we go. Goes in that first groove just like that. So that is ready to go. And then this actually is gonna go in first. As I'm assembling this parking brake setup, it does require a little bit of grease. We're gonna use the included grease packet. This is the milky white colored stuff, not the red packet. This is for the rubber. So this is caliper slide grease, but it also is gonna work great for this because it's all rated for high temperature brake caliper usage. So I'm gonna use a little bit down in the cylinder, not a whole bunch, because we wanna be able to have some left over for the slide pins. But I'm just gonna put a little bit down in there and then use a small screwdriver that's clean to kind of spread it around. There we go. And if you wanna be extra thorough, you can even use this pin that's gonna go down there. And I've already greased it up a little bit you can rotate it around, move it up and down, make sure that everything is well lubricated. Just like that. Now, we're ready to actually install the oil seal. So, brand new oil seal, or grease seal in this case, that fits right there. And you can actually use a socket that's about the right size and use it to press that seal into place. I can actually press this in one uh, by hand. It shouldn't be a lot of effort, but it shouldn't just be a, a flop into place kind of fit. But now that I have this pressed in, this part is done and I can actually install our arm for the parking brake actuator in its home. Carefully slide it down into place, just like that. And that part is ready to go. Next, I need to install the threaded rod. And this guy does have the dowel that lives in the back there. And to get this to stay in place when you install it, this is another one where it's important to put a little dab of grease right there. So that way, when you have this guy, not only is it lubricated because it does need to pivot and move a little bit in here. And I put a little dab of grease on the pocket there in the pin. But now, this will hold it in place, so that way I can actually install this without it just falling out. But right before you put it in though, add just a little bit of grease on the O-ring as well. There we are. And now, we're ready to install the threaded rod. So, it just slides back in there. And this will be easier when you're doing it because you'll get to see what you're doing. But now I've got it pressed into place and then you can also move the arm a little bit and you can feel that little pin getting pressed in and out of that divot that's on the rod. So if you can feel it with your finger on the end of the threaded rod as you move it around, you know that you've got everything in there and seated properly. The threaded rod is in place, so we just need to keep it captive by using the little circlip that came out and our special circlip pliers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it loaded on here. There we go. And you do need to be careful if your circlip pliers have uh, longer fingers that go through the circlip that you kind of get it towards the edge because this circlip does need to be fed in there kind of flatly up against the bottom of that threaded rod that we just installed. Carefully feed your circlip down around the threaded rod, down into its base. And if it doesn't go into the groove, it's likely because your threaded rod is not seated far enough, so you may need to play with the swing arm a little bit 
and put some pressure on that threaded rod to make sure that it actually falls down in there. So once you've got it down in there, well, the good tip is to make sure that it's fully seated. So take a pick like this and you can kind of use it to spin it around to make it seat or actually in this case, I'm gonna to need to use a screwdriver and press down on the far end to get it to fall into place. There we go, a little click. So once it's in there, you can see that I can actually move it around pretty easily with this little pick. And once it's like that, you know that it's in there, it's actually seated. And of course I can move the arm around and it's not gonna come flying out. The last bit of the parking brake arm assembly that we need to install is the spring. So to do this, it is gonna fight you a little bit, but go ahead and set it on the post that it rotates around get the short arm lined up and underneath the head of this little retention rod and then use your pliers to push it over and get it underneath the actual swing arm for the cable. There we go. And this guy, the, the spring, the coil, the top coil of the spring, it does stick up above that post that's in the middle that it rotates around, and that's okay. That's actually how they come from the factory. But once you've got it to this point and you can actuate this rod just like that, you're good to go. Now that the spring is installed, the parking brake arm is ready to go. That part's finished up and we can move on to installing some other seals and finishing up the rest of the caliper. So next thing I'm gonna focus on is getting the caliper piston and the bore all ready to go. So the first thing to do is get the new piston O-ring. That's this square cut O-ring. And it goes in the groove that is closest to the bore of the cylinder itself. This outside groove is for the boot that protects the innards of the caliper from all the dust and grime outside. But this inner groove is where the square O-ring is to be installed and you'll kind of have to fold it up and around to get it into position. There you go. And it will snap into place and make sure it's not folded over on itself and that it's all seated correctly. Before we install the piston, we need to lube up that O-ring. So this red lube is what is used for all of the rubber meaning this little guy for the piston seal. And this one, because of the threaded rod in the inside, I'm gonna actually put it on a little screwdriver like this and then use that to lube up this O-ring. Feel free to use your fingers if that works better for you, not a problem. And this stuff will work just fine with brake fluid. You don't have to worry about getting any of this grease mixed up with your brake fluid, it breaks down just fine in brake fluid. This is mostly like installation lube, kind of like if you've ever as assembled an engine and you need to do assembly lube, putting all the parts together. This is a very similar process. There we go. That's lubricated. Next, we're gonna take our new piston. It should be plenty clean out of the box. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a wipe just to make sure I'm not introducing any kind of dirt or debris. And then I'm also going to put some of this lube on the piston itself. I don't have to go crazy. That's probably a little much really, but lubing up the piston will make it a little easier to install just like that. Before we install the new piston though, because of this threaded rod, we're actually going to use the threaded rod to pull the piston into position. So to do that, get your spline drive. Make sure it's cleaned off if you haven't already done so. And I also like to put a little bit of this caliper slide grease on here just to give it a little bit of lubrication. Doesn't need much at all. And go ahead and stick that into the back of your caliper, just like that. Grab your four millimeter Allen and then carefully get your piston installed here. It'll take a little bit of wiggling to get it into position so that way it will be compressed by the O-ring.
Once you have the piston pressed in and it's being held in by that O-ring, but we're not actually threaded onto the rod, we'll use that Allen key and the spline drive that we just installed to be able to draw the piston into the caliper. So keep a little bit of pressure on the piston and then you should start to feel the piston being pulled into the caliper body. With the piston fully retracted, now we can install the new piston boot. So um, we're probably gonna get comments about it. And if you'd like to try installing this on the piston before you get the piston fully seated, give it a shot. Personally, I find that installing it after the fact is actually a little bit easier. So to each their own, but I like to get it seated. That way I can stretch the boot over the piston like so. And then I can start tucking in all of the edges of the seal because you can see that it's already sticking up on one side whereas it's actually kind of sat already in the groove on this other side. So you can carefully start pushing the boot down into that groove. Just be careful that as you're using small screwdrivers or picks to do this that you don't accidentally poke through the rubber and create an even bigger problem. So I've got the outer seal sat into the housing and now I'm going to also make sure that I have it sat into the piston itself and you can pretty much just use a small flat blade screwdriver like this or even a small quarter inch extension if you want and just kind of push it down and around just gently tapping everything into place. And now, to ensure that you have everything fully seated, what I like to do is then extend the piston out a little bit. One of the good things about extending it after you've sat the seal around in the piston or the caliper body is that you can make sure that as you're moving it out that it doesn't also come out with the piston itself. And so far, it's looking pretty good. So. It is still seated here, and then I'm gonna keep moving this inner groove like that down into the piston. And it's just going to sit just like that. Now, with that piston seal fully installed, I'm going to retract the piston a final time, and we are done with this portion. The main functionality of the piston is all taken care of, so now we just need to worry about the sliders and the bracket that the caliper body attaches to. So on this particular caliper, we have a slider that has a captive boot, and then we also have kind of a slide guide of sorts that is also a boot. So we're gonna install these guys next. To start off with this particular one, the slider goes on the inside, but then this sleeve actually goes on the inside of this bore. To install this sleeve, I like to use a little bit of a water-based soap, something like Simple Green, or basically something that when it dries out, it's not gonna leave an oily residue. So just a little bit of a squirt like that to get it lubed up, and then you can kind of pinch and fold it over on itself if you need to, to get a, a better start inside the caliper. Make sure that the accordion side of this is on the caliper or rotor side. And if need be, you can also use a screwdriver to kind of help you flatten it down and continue to push it through. Just be careful that you don't poke through the slide or damage it. Once you have the lip pushed through like this, you know that it's fully seated and that guy is done. On this caliper, the other side is even easier. You have a little accordion style boot with a smaller opening on one side and a larger opening on the other. And this simply slots over the top of this little 
lip. So just like O-rings are very similar to O-rings, you can kind of just stretch the boot a little bit and then pull it up and over and around that lip. And once you have this in place where it's not moving around after you pull on it a little bit, that boot is installed. Now that the caliper is prepped and ready to accept the caliper bracket and slide pins, we need to get our caliper bracket prepared by removing the other slider that we left on earlier and installing the new sliders. To remove these slide pins, you will need some Allens to be able to get them out. This has a six millimeter Allen keyway on this particular caliper bracket. And if you need to, you might even want to clamp this in a vise to hold it in place because the threads are likely very, very stuck. They do have a little bit of Loctite. Also, they've seen a lot of heat and a lot of weather, so be prepared. But they will come out with an Allen. So they just unthread like this. There we go, there's the old slide pin. And because we have two new ones, this is the larger one. Make sure you keep it on the right orientation. Threads right in, it already has pre-installed Loctite, so you're good to go and then tighten it down. Now that we have the main caliper slide pin installed, we can get the removable one or the one that you take out to be able to swap pads. This one does not have Loctite on the threads on this particular one because it is intended to be installed and removed whenever you need to change out pads. If you have a slightly different caliper, yours might be different, but if you want on this particular one, not that it needs it, you could put a little dab of blue Loctite. We're not gonna worry about it on this one. We're just gonna make sure that it's snug. This one uses a 10 millimeter. And there we go. New caliper slide pins. And lastly, they need to be lubricated before we install them into the caliper. So the same slide grease that we've been using for the parking brake arm mechanism we're gonna put a little bit of that on these caliper slide pins. And then also, while we're here, I'm going to put a little bit into the slide grooves, just like that. And on this side, just like that. Don't need to go crazy on the grease, but it does need to be well lubricated because this is how the caliper moves as it's squishing the pads against the rotor. So I also like to use a small pick or a small screwdriver here to kind of spread the lube around a little bit. And same thing on this side, just to try to get it covered as much as possible before the sliders go in. When the sliders do go in, it'll also squish this grease around and it'll be well covered anyway. But I like to make sure that we're covered completely as much as possible. There we go. The slide pins are lubricated, so now we're ready to assemble this into a caliper assembly. So on this caliper, I can actually do both at the same time. I'm gonna start the longer one because it's a little bit larger and then get the other one lined up. And it will require a little bit of effort to press into the seals just because they are new. But give it a little bit of a wiggle and then add a little bit of pressure. And then just like that. So now we want to make sure that the bracket slides smoothly, the pins don't hang up, that there's no crunchiness, anything like that. Everything seems fine. Also, that when you press them in, if you compress it all the way like this, it will probably already seat them for you. But if you pull out the slide just a little bit, Make sure that the boots are actually clipped on over the little detent in the bolt or the slider pin. It's hard to see on this one, actually, because it's so well adhered. There we go. So there's a little bit of a groove there. But as you compress the slide, it will naturally slide into place and hook on. So wipe up any residual grease, because this is always a little bit of a messy step. 
And this is our now one piece caliper. There's a couple more piddly little things that we need to do before this caliper is ready to bolt back on the car. So if it's fallen out, like it probably does, if you've never put the cap back in and you've been changing the, flipping the caliper up and down, put your little spline drive back in there because you will need that to be able to set the parking brake adjustment later. Get your bolt, make sure that it's got a little copper crush washer on there and reinstall it. I'm not even gonna bother making this tight because as I know, when I get this installed in the car, I'm gonna have to take that right back off. But since we're leaving the bench with this caliper in a moment, I don't want that spline drive to come falling out again. Also over here, for our caliper slide pin on this side, there is a little cover, a little cap, and this just presses into place, easy peasy. And now the very last piece of the puzzle is the bleed screw. There's a new one included with the kit, and it threads in just like the original one came out. Because this is a rear caliper, on this particular ear range, it does require a seven millimeter wrench, you have one for a different caliper, it may need an eight millimeter wrench, but suffice it to say that once you've got it tightened down and then you install the cute little cap, now we have a fully rebuilt caliper that's ready to go back into service for lots of years to come and do a good job stopping the car. So that's it. Hopefully this was a good video that you learned something. Hopefully this process has encouraged you to rebuild your own calipers. If you have any questions or need help with this, feel free to give us a call. Our contact information and phone number is down below. Otherwise, thanks again. We appreciate it and we'll see you next time.